scrapbookers, it's Katie Scott and I will be making this page today and um, this is the little trick where I film something at the end so you know where we're going. So for this page I have um, made notes about a family history, um, ancestry, mystery. And so there's a question of who, this Ellen Louise Joyce is my great grandmother. Was her mother Mary Jane O'Brien or Mary Shutters? If you look at my um, family records, it would show that Mary O'Brien is my second great grandmother, but according to the DNA matches, it's Mary Shutters. So I don't know. So that's the mystery. So the title is Mother Mary Mystery, and I did the little hashtag down here of who do you think you are. Um, so if you want to make a page like this, if you have maybe um, a family history, something that you want to um, really use a lot of writing space, I would say get, um, what I did for this page is I got, um, oops, uh, a ledger sheet and then make all of your notes in advance. And then I used a piece of vellum that I adhered with um, twine and I did that with a crocodile. So I made five holes. I even made notes on the back. <laughs> um, but I put t this part together with twine and I do that on the video so you'll be able to see. And then I've done this thing that I've been doing lately where I put titles in three different places. So, and, and then I considered whether to put any embellishments on this page and I ultimately decided not to. The only really embellishment that I have is I used um, a border punch on the vellum. Um, haven't used, we haven't been seeing a lot of border punches lately, but can you see that? It's kind of pretty. Uh, so if you want to follow along, I would say get one photo a strip of vellum and a ledger sheet and then and then maybe just pause right now and go ahead and make notes about whatever your page like whatever you have a lot to say about um, make that um, on make your notes on directly onto the ledger sheet and then um, and then click me back on and we'll get started with making the page okay thanks for watching and um, and enjoy okay bye bye Hi scrapbookers, so it's Katie Scott and this is actually my second take. I'll play the first take at the end, just it's funny but we don't need to start with it. So I do scrapbooking process videos and I haven't done a lot of them over the summer. I haven't even done a lot of scrapbooking over the summer because I've been totally immersed in the Ancestry DNA, um, you know, I've been doing that. So what you do when you get the Ancestry DNA and I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that. I just really am excited about this product. So you get this in the mail. Uh, welcome to Ancestry DNA. And then it shows you exactly what to do. And this was my husband's kit. And so it's empty and I should probably throw this away. Um, but it gives you this little vial that you can spit into. <laughs> and then it gives you this little box that you mail up back to Ancestry. And then they will... Um, They'll analyze your sample and then they will put into your, they'll merge your family trees with other family trees where the DNA lines up. And so by, it won't, it will tell you what your ethnic origins are. So mine are like I'm 69% British and then 20% Irish and a, you know, a little bit of other things. Um, but Anyways, my grandmother, Grace, was Irish, and this is her mother, Ellen, and I, I'm pretty sure she was Irish. And that's how we always, I, you know, identified that side of the family is we pretty much thought my grandmother's family, these would be all of her descendants, or all of her ancestors, um, were all Irish. And so when I was going through ancestry, the family, and building the family tree, because we really didn't have that line traced back very far. Um, so I just put in my grandmother and then my great grandparents and then I got my grand, my great grandfather and my great grandmother and I put in Mary Ellen Shutters because that's what the Ancestry DNA um, recommended and or before I had the Ancestry DNA but then when I got the DNA I could trace but because it compares you with other people's family trees. So three different of her lines, 
I'm lining up with until I looked at my um, my mother's wedding book and she had all of her um, you know her grandparents and great grandparents listed in there and lo and behold Mary G Mary Ellen Shutters isn't who was listed in the book it was Mary Jane O'Brien and so and then I was like well that seems weird so this is just kind of like my worksheet where I keep track of who I'm DNA related to, <laughs> Mary Shutters, um, and then I make notes about the people, um, the different an other ancestry members who are my distant cousins. And so far I have four um, through, through Ellen Joyce, and so three, you know, it looked like pretty strongly that I was really related to Mary Ellen Shutters. So, but that's not what my mother thinks. She's like, no, no, it was Mary O'Brien. So I went back and I looked, and so my baby book says Mary O'Brien, and then I went through the census reports and I transcribed this all down just on just scrapbooking paper that's like ledger paper. And my husband saw this and he's like, oh, where did you get that? Like, he thought this was an old document. I'm like, no, honey, it's just scrapbooking paper. It just looks old. And so, on the back, I actually um, compared, this is Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen Shutters, and all of the yellow is where I'm DNA connected to her, and then, and so then this is Mary O'Brien, and I don't have any DNA connections to her at this point. So I really think that I'm, that my second great-grandmother is Mary Ellen Shutters, but my mom and my aunt think it's Mary O'Brien. So I did this whole, you know, looking through the census and I just writing it all down. And sometimes when you're doing um, genealogy, it really helps to write it down. Just the process of writing is going to help make you think about it longer. So I can see, um, like, in the 1880 census, Mary O'Brien was 20 years old and living with her mother, Mary, and her sister, Bridget, and her two brothers who both worked in the, on the railroad in Pennsylvania. But then Mary Shutters lived with her parents um, and her dad was a farmer. And so, and they both lived in Pennsylvania but in different parts of Pennsylvania. And so there's a mystery, who is the mother of Ellen Joyce? And so this is Ellen Joyce and she became Ellen Flavin. But this is really, so I want the page to be about this mystery and um, what I am thinking of doing is using the photo, and these are just like a picture of a, or you know, a scanned picture or a picture of a picture. So I have two different sizes, I guess you would say. It's the same picture um, that I will be using on this page. And this, this whole bit will go into my scrapbook, but will be on the back of it. So this was really like a worksheet for me that now I'm going to scrapbook over, but what I'm thinking is that and originally I was thinking I was, I was going to use this here and do like, oh, who is your mama? <laughs> and I guess I could do two, like a two-page layout, but I'm not really sure I want to use that much space. Um, I guess I could, though. It might be, that might be a little bit interesting. If I did that, I don't think... Maybe it could go like this way. But the, my problem with using these two papers together is that one of them is just obviously old. And, you know, my husband even thought it was really old. <laughs> Couldn't believe he thought that. I'm like, don't you know they didn't make 12 by 12 paper in the 1800s? But whatever. Um, or I could use this and have that be the photo. I kind of, um, I don't know. So, okay, <laughs> I'm not sure what to do here, um, but I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look a little bit through my, I have some papers here, I'll just, since I like to film these in real time, um, I have some photo, some paper that I kind of consider my ancestry paper, like if I'm going to be doing family trees and that sort of thing, I have a whole bunch of kind of like, you know, grungy looking old 
papers. Well, I guess that's not very grungy. That's KI Memories. Um, here's one. This is interesting. I could do, but I don't really want to use that on this page. Um, this is a map. That's kind of interesting. And I could have like, did you come from this part of Pennsylvania or that part of Pennsylvania? I'm still kind of shocked that we even came from Pennsylvania at all. Because I thought we were just from Massachusetts. Um, so that was a little surprise. But maybe they came, um, you know, over during the potato famine. and See, I don't know. I think they came even earlier than that, which kind of surprised me too. I kind of wish, um, you know, a, a fairy from... <laughs> Who do you think you are would just swoop in and solve all of these questions for me? There's so I don't see another piece that I would really like to use here. Um, so my other thought was to use vellum over this here, and so that you wouldn't necessarily have to read all of that or feel like you needed to if it were. Um, let's see, I'm, I've got a bunch of vellum. Close, or I thought I did. Vellum, I have some. Okay. So, what the other thought was to use a piece of vellum. Okay, this has like swirly kind of, you know, family trees. And use that kind of over this somehow so that somebody could peel this back and look they wanted to, but they didn't have to. Something like, something like that. I think that's maybe what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to just put the stitch here, and then I can put my title right on that vellum. So let's go ahead and do that. Did you miss me? <laughs> I know I haven't scrapbooked in a while, or I have, but it hasn't been very frequent. Um, so my kids are starting school again um, pretty soon here, so I think I'm going to have it go just about like this. So I hope to be getting back into a better routine of productivity. <laughs> I was listening to the paper clipping round table um, yesterday, and the newest one has Wendy Smedley and... C.C. Julian and um, Wendy Smedley mentioned my Pinterest board where I post my own layouts and I call it my productivity and I haven't been <laughs> like putting a, pinning a lot over the summer onto my productivity. Um, there's been little going on. But I've had a great summer. Uh, my daughter and I um, took a road trip and that was a lot of fun. So when I do kind of pocket pages like this, and this isn't like a Becky Higgins Project Life kind of pocket page, but this is actually a pocket. So I'm going to stitch on the vellum around this first and then adhere it down just because I think that looks better. And I could stitch around the hole, but I don't think I'm going to do that just going to stitch on that vellum. And I have been having some trouble with my sewing machine, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the video off um, while I do the sewing, and then I will be right back, because I think it makes a big noisy mess. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm having so much trouble with my um, sewing machine that I got just a, a minute into that, and it just looks like, it doesn't even look like cute disaster. It just looks like a disaster. So I'm gonna have to rethink how I adhere that down, which really stresses me out because I'm gonna have to ask my husband to look at that sewing machine and figure out what's wrong with it. And um, usually I think what, what ends up being wrong with it is that when you use a, a sewing machine in scrapbooking, then there's a tendency to, um, adhesive to get into your sewing machine which will gunk it all up and is not good at all. So I'm going to just cut that piece of vellum off there and then we'll see what we can do. Moving that, that cutter every time isn't the most ideal but let's see what else we can do to um, 
adhere that down. Okay, so another idea would be to put the photo like on a strip like this, like going across the page. I really did like it going this way a little bit better. And I'm not going to move my, my cutter every time. Um, so there's, so that's cut down, and I don't mind that. Um, just wondering what the best way to adhere it would be. The other problem that I have is that I've got writing really close to the edge on the back, and the back writing is actually kind of important. So I'm not sure I want to do it that way either. Um, maybe this, maybe like this. So her name is right here, so I kind of like it being there. Um, hmm. How to adhere this? It that is a really good question because I just don't know. Um, okay, so one thought that I'm having is maybe I use my um, crop dial, okay, and so okay, one. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this. So I'm making five holes. Right there. And they, they should be kind of even, but they're not. And that's fine because that's going to make it look more homemade, <laughs> which I hope is a good thing in this case. And then I'm going to find some twine. And I have some here handy. It's kind of like, seems, um, a little gaudy, but I think that'll be okay. I'm going to use two of them, I think, like this. So this is pink paisley twine. And I know that if you look online, there's a way, like a book binding kind of a way to do this, um, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to pull through a bunch. Oops. I'm going to pull through a bunch. <laughs> I'm going to try to. Come on. Okay. So I probably want it to go once. Twice. I'm going to pull like three times the amount that I need. So I'm going to cut that off on the back and then on the back I'm just going to tape that down. And yeah, that's going to make the back ugly. I know, what do you do? Oh, maybe I could even make a clever title like Loose Threads or Trying to Tie Things Up. I'm not going to do that. But I could. <laughs> I might. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, so I've been like totally immersed in all of this ancestry stuff. I mean, and I've gone crazy like buying old photos on eBay. And I'll show you some of those. I, I did one video where I showed you how I'm displaying them. But my thought is I bought a lot of them. Like of people that I'm not even necessarily related to. But I love the idea of being like the pay it forward, you know, happy genealogy lady that like finds the actual ancestor or descendants. And so, and then like getting the photos back to the people, that'd be cool. But I mean, I'm wondering, I, I heard about a guy that did that, and, but I'm kind of wondering like, I mean, I've, my husband showed me my credit card bill, and he's like, um, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know. Gone a little crazy with the genealogy. 
But, um, so I'm wondering, like, if I should match the people up and then, like, contact the ancestors or the descendants and then sell them to them or just give them to them. And I'm kind of torn because really, like, I didn't intend to make it, like, some kind of money-making thing, but on the other hand, I can't really, like, buy so many of these old photos without like having a way to pay for them all. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But I'm thinking about it. It's fun anyways. And I'm also wondering like if you kind of made it into a reselling the stuff on eBay with the ancestors located. Um, how time consuming that would be versus um, the benefit. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm undecided yet. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm having so much fun with this genealogy. It is. It's crazy fun. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I mean, it's like a real life puzzle, you know. It really is. And so, okay, so I'm thinking about titles and I'm thinking like, how do we figure out who your mama is? Like, who's your mama? <laughs> Ellen Joyce. So I know her dad was William. It's really weird. And I'm not sure which which um, Mary he married. Mary, Mary, oh why a bugging? Remember that song from the '80s? Mary, Mary, I need your loving. It was like, I don't even know who sang it. It's one of those goofy songs. Okay, I think this is, I think I got this right actually. Wow. Okay, so I think I can unhook this twine. And then, dun 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 dun. Um, tie it off. But I think I want the tied bits to be on the front, you know? Maybe I'll just tie them once and then stick them through. See how that works. Tie them twice and stick them through. I think that might work. So I guess one of the ways you can kind of figure out these little um, DNA questions is that if you have a cousin um, that you can use, like if I had a cousin, which I do, through this grandma, then um, I can have her take the test, or him take the test, and, um, and then see if we're still matching up, you know. And that's called triangulation, and I'm, I kind of know how it works, but I don't totally, I don't completely understand it. It's like, if you think you're related to somebody, then you, you use, like, another person to figure out if you really are or not. I'm sure it works. I just, I'm probably not that good at explaining it. But I think that um, with the genealogy and the family history research, some of, like, it's really, I mean, we're so blessed with, we have, I mean, we can just get instant answers on Ancestry and, and the internet, you know, even if you're not using Ancestry, but, but the problem is, is that you can almost go too fast and then miss stuff, like this problem of the two Marys, and so, um, like, scrapbooking about your family history and, and having to explain it kind of helps you to slow down and maybe work through the problems. And I don't have, I don't have it. Like, I'm, it's not, I don't have it figured out yet. And so I think I want to just cut this right here. And, you know, okay, so I'm going to do, do a couple of cuts here. I'm just going to trim up that picture. No big whoop. Okay. So there's the picture, and it wasn't a frame, so it's kind of off, which I'm kind of wondering if I should 
trim it up even more, but I think I'm not going to. But then I think I'm going to break out the border punch, which I haven't used in so long, right? Like, I don't even know where they are. Okay, I, I see them. <laughs> They're like way across my room on my um, expedit. My expedit shelves. Okay, so <laughs> climbing. <laughs> okay, I'm coming back. So here's my little bin of, you know, seldom used, whatever you call these things, um, border punches, yeah, yeah, I remember what they're called, right? Okay, so this is a Martha Stewart border punch, and I'm just going to go through this way, so I'm going through, is that how we do it, upside down? I better remember, actually, I, ha I have a chance to Hmm. So I think it goes like this. You line it up this way, right? It has like little marks. I don't really like where I've lined it up. <laughs> that might be a problem. Because I want that to be actually just a little bit shorter. Hmm. So I have to figure out how to fix that. But let's just finish this first. kind of missed using the border punches. I think they kind of went out of trend because everyone got the silhouette and then nobody cared so much about the border punches anymore. But there's something very satisfying about using a border punch. It's like lining it up and getting it all punched out. Okay. See how pretty? It is pretty, right? And it kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, old Irish ladies crocheted things, right? <laughs> like all the Irish lace. That's what I'm kind of going for. But I don't really like, um, I wanted it to be actually a little bit shorter. And so I'm wondering, can I do it again and see? I don't know how this is going to work out. I probably shouldn't be doing this. Oh, okay, it works. I think it was probably a mistake, <laughs> but I wanted it to be shorter so you can see those dates. Ugh, I think I just kind of made it look like a mess, but what do you do? So the other thing is you can watch if you're interested in whoops <laughs> in genealogy is you can watch that show called. Who do you think you are? And um, it's on again. So it just started, and they've done Cynthia Nixon, and then they did the guy from Modern Family. I don't remember what his name was. And then, yeah, I like that a little better. Although, I think it's not quite as clean, but neither is this family line. <laughs> um, and then they did uh, Rachel McAdams and her sister. And so, so far, the, the, um, the season has been really exciting and fun to watch. So, here we are again with the, we've got our little vellum piece and then this here. And now my next step is, how do I adhere Ellen onto the page? And um, one of the things that I really love doing lately is having two or more, like two or three titles in two different places. <laughs> and I think I heard um, my good friend, um, Debbie Hodge, who I'm on her creative team at Get It Scrapped. So, you know, what I love about her and the community is that we don't always have to agree. Like we can have like friendly, disagreements and so you know, she um, she's probably more apt to follow rules in scrapbooking than I am and um, I would say she would adhere to just one place for a title and don't be having like 50, 50 places for a title um, just have one but I 
of course, like to, I like to, um, if you tell me I've got to do something, I want to do the opposite. It's an oppositional defiant disorder, maybe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't think I actually have that. Um, but who knows, maybe I do. Um, but okay, so I'm thinking the who do you think you are, like the hashtag here, and then her name up here, like Ellen Joyce's name, Ellen Louise Joyce up here, and then um, like Mary Jane O'Brien versus Mary Shutters over here. So I want like three different fonts, and that, and I've just, I have um, adhered Ellen down to the vellum. It's, I'm not sure if I want to put a mat under there or not, but let's start looking at, um, what do you call them? Let's start looking at fonts. So I'm going to just pause it for a second, and then I'll come back with some fonts. Okay, I'm back, and let me tell you, finding a font with a hashtag or a letter sticker sheet with a hashtag is harder than you would think. Um, and so I didn't really find one, but I like these letters here. I know they're hard to see. Um, I liked these letters. I'm just shocked that no hashtags. That's totally stumping me. Um, I looked at a bunch of different letter stickers. Like I love these ones um, by Jenny Bolin. No hashtag. What's going on, people? Put some hashtags. Um, but I'm thinking that this Teresa Collins, it's called Memorabilia, might um, might help. So I haven't looked at this line yet. I just I bought it and then then <laughs> been in my little bin that I use um, ever since. And I just so I'm not totally sure what's in here. So. There, this is like a cut apart kind of a thing. That's nice. Um, <laughs> so this is a detour <laughs> on what I was... Um, it's nice though, right? Oh, I like that recorded. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to be using this. I like the library cards are cool too. Ooh, yeah, I like a lot of the stuff. Um, but I was thinking I could, I thought, I, I guess I was thinking there would be uh, letter stickers in here, but I don't see it. So here's Tell Me a Story. Here's um, like kind of an old fashioned looking car. I like this one because it kind of has arrows going in two directions. Um, so what I'm thinking is uh, maybe we use like three things that are the same color of this yellow to do like a visual triangle somewhere on the page. Um, so I would think this is also interesting because it's got t like a bicycle built for two and we've got like two potential mothers here and then I've got one that says notes. So let me go ahead and cut some of these apart and then we'll start to place them onto the page. And then we'll <laughs> then we'll get back to the title because I I was like honestly a little stumped on the title. Okay, be right back. Or maybe I'll just keep going. How about that? Would that be easier? <laughs> Possibly. Okay. So I'm just gonna use I think just regular scissors. And I will just try to cut um, as straight as I can. What do you think? Probably not the best idea. Let's see. Oh, you've even got these little icony things. That's cool. Interesting. I wish I had two of these this ladies. That would be... Or maybe I could just put like a question mark on the lady. That might work. Okay, so this is one of the 
for the embellishment clusters. There's one little bit. And then I like this bit over here. This one with the two different directions of the family tree, because I'm not sure. Um, she thought she could, so she did. Okay, not going to use that right now. And the bicycle built for two, I like that. So that would be an example of using a bicycle when we're not talking about going biking. That was a question recently in the um, paper clipping forums. Somebody said, How, when would you use a bicycle when you're not scrapbooking about bicycling? And this is when I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, because of the, the bicycle built for two aspect of it. So there's three little bits. Let's get maybe a couple. I think that one could work. And one more. I'm thinking maybe this here. Circle. Although that seems a little big. Maybe the little postcard. Okay. Oh, I forgot about the other parts there. <laughs> that there are words too. Let's see. So we could do if we did. Hmm. I like there was notes. I liked that. Um, let's use that one. That's in yellow. Cut that up. And then I like um, using the word family. I mean, it seems pretty obvious, but why not, family? Maybe try the 100% because I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so there's three. Three is a good number when you're picking stuff. Okay, so let's just see where the three things could go. So I was talking about putting three different titles. I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but um, let's see. sort of moving things around to try to figure out where to put stuff. Um, don't like the way that I'm arranging these, but it's good to just try to try to start. I think I have too many of these. I want to maybe go back to the idea of 
just, um, I, I think I like it without all of this action. I think I want to just keep it simple with the um, fonts. So let's just go back and try that. And I really want a hashtag. <laughs> I just don't have one. Um, is there a way to make a hashtag? I bet you could make one out of um, maybe the U or an H. I don't know. Let's see what we can do to make one. Because um, I really liked, I think a lot of times if you go with your initial idea, that's the, that's the, that's the ticket. Okay, so here's a gray that I can put underneath her. Who do you think you are? So I'm going to, one thing that I like to do when I'm doing these, when I'm spelling something out, is I will write it out. Who do you think you are? That's going to be the hashtag. And so I'm going to spell it, but I'm going to start at this edge. I need to figure out how to make the hashtag. I don't know how yet. I'm not too worried about it. I bet Ellen never would have imagined she'd be having a little hashtaggy thing under her picture. And they didn't, I didn't think they all, always called them hashtags, did they? Who made that up? <laughs> I thought they were called pound signs. Uh, okay. And a W. Okay, now I need to figure out how to make that hashtag. And I'm thinking maybe just with the eyes, that might be the easiest thing to do. But again, I'm gonna say I'm really surprised that there's no hashtag. You think we can do it? I think we can do it. I'm just wondering if it'll actually look like a hashtag. Like it just looks like a tic-tac-toe board, right? But I feel like there's usually a little italics thing going on with it. It doesn't really look like this. But hey, we're just improvising here. And that's just fine. Okay. So I'm going to kind of weave this under so it's not all consistent. There we go. I hope that'll make it stick better too. Maybe. <laughs> it either will or it won't, huh? I'm not sure. Okay. So there's the hashtag, who do you think you are? And now I want her um, name, I think, to go up here. So, Okay, so I'm going to put her name up here, I think, in red. And her name is Ellen Louise Joyce. Okay, I'm not sure you want to sit through all of this, but I'm going to go ahead. Oh, why not? Well, I don't know. Sometimes I think I bore you or that these go too long. Ellen. 
Louise. Oh, Louise. So I almost feel like I should um, hire a genealogist or something to help me figure this out because I am stumped. Like, it's, they call it a brick wall in, um, in genealogy. And I kind of think this is a brick wall because I'm not really sure. Um, and there's the thing with some of my other lines my other like family lines is they go back so far and they're so well documented um, that it's so easy for me to put together all the pieces of my family tree like because most of my other lines go back to the pilgrims <laughs> um, but this line is Irish and they had from what I understand not so great record keeping and so it's like I've heard the analogy or the comparison even um, like the Kennedys, you know, who are a very well documented family and well researched and everything else, that they can only go a couple of generations back in their family history. Um, so I think if you're Irish, you have a, you have a hard time <laughs> figuring this out um, because it's not very well documented. But this question of the Mary O'Brien versus the Mary Shutters really does have me stumped. I have no idea what to make of it. Okay, Ellen Louise, choice. Y, C, E. And so I also wonder if this Joyce family is related to the author, James Joyce. That would be pretty cool, huh? But I have no idea. <laughs> I guess I should, uh, look up his genealogy and see if I can fit those two things together. I've been able to do that in my other lines with the, the ones that go back to the pilgrims. It's really easy. But, um, but the, um, the Irish are just, they're hard and difficult to figure out. Okay, so now let's, let's bring these up. So maybe we could put I don't think I like that. Family. That's so goofy. It, it kind of feels a little goofy. <laughs> so I'm thinking of putting. Like this. Oh, it's crazy! I know, <laughs> and I know that's not an Irish accent. Um, but putting like a question mark over her face over this. Okay, so there's that little question. Okay, I, I, I'm starting to like this. I'm going to move this up just a little bit, and I'm going to cover up her name. No, I'm not. Okay. So let's just tape this down. And I'm just using double stick tape, which I think will hold on the vellum. I'm just going to tuck that under the photo, and I want to be able to see her, her name in my little line up there in my notes. And then I don't really want this part to show, so I'm going to... And so when you turn this, like if you were really interested in the, the answer, when you turn this over, you are going to see the backs of all of this garbage, but I don't care. It's, a, it's fine. Okay, I could call it like a mother mystery. Yeah, I like that. 
Mother Mary Mystery, because we know her name is Mary. Okay, that's it. That's the title. Mother Mary Mystery. So I'm going to put um, Mystery in red, and then the other parts in um, gray. Yes. <laughs> so I don't think Debbie Hodge would ever make a layout like this. <laughs> she would say this, like, whole, like she would move this over here at least. But yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna. Okay. I mean, I should, but I'm not going to. It would look better if this was over here. And there's more kids. I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back, and I get to tell you, I'm, I really wish I put this over here, the title over here, but uh, should we do it? I guess we should. It'll look better. Blah. Okay, so I want it to kind of line up to her picture and to this. So it's going to go here. Okay. How annoying is that? Okay, so... I need to go have some fun with my kids in just a second. They um, have both informed me that they're bored. I'm like, seriously? Like, they only have a few days before school starts. And um, we had a pretty active summer. So I was just trying to have a little, like, peaceful time at home um, before school started. So I didn't really have anything planned for this last weekend of summer. Like, we went to Comic-Con last weekend and... Before that, we were in the Keys, and before that, Allison and I had a huge road trip, so it's been, like, a very exciting summer. Um, okay, that's going to look better. It's kind of annoying to have to, um, to move all of these little letters, but they'll move. It's okay. Um, so yeah, I like the, the having three different places where you have, right, like, the title. Um, I was talking about that before, and it's not really probably the best design choice, but I don't know. I just kind of like it lately, so <laughs> that's what I've been doing. Um, I don't think it's the worst mistake I've ever made. I think it's fine. Um, but yeah, I think they want more excitement than sitting around the house doing nothing. So maybe we'll go to the beach or I don't know what we'll do. So one of my grand plans of summer was I was going to lose all this weight. <laughs> that didn't happen. And then once I got back from, because um, I ate all a bunch of lobster rolls. I don't really don't think lobster rolls make you fat, though. Um, <laughs> just don't. Because um, they're so good. Um, but we got back from our big road trip, and then I was like, I'm going to try to go vegan. And so I spent a couple weeks really trying to be vegan and deciding I don't really think I like beans enough to successfully be a vegan. Um, so then I was like, well, I'll be a pescatarian. And then I was just like, well, I'll just eat anything I want. So <laughs> that's what I've been up to lately. Um, so I need to, I'm looking at the kids going back to school as a good starting time to um, recommit to exercise and mindful eating. I don't know what that will look like. We'll see. Ellen, Ellen Louise Joyce. Okay. And then I almost think I want to put like second great grandma. No, she's just my great grandma. I think she's, yeah, because it's me, my mother, my grandmother, and then her. So she's going to be my my great grandmother. So I'm going to put that in this. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to watch me place letters, and that's going to be really fun. Um, <laughs> well, I'll just keep talking to you. So there's, I think I've mentioned her before, but there's a girl from my high school, and she's on um, Facebook, and every day she and her husband pitch, put pictures of themselves working out. And it's like, it's kind of hilarious, but it's also, because like he's always never wearing his shirt, you know, <laughs> like, 
and he's just like he's gotten a lot of tattoos and it seems like he was a pretty laced up conservative guy like in his younger years and as he's getting older I think he's probably getting wilder you know in a good way but um so anyways I watch them and they're very they're very um fun to watch but I also think like well they do it every you know that's what they do every day and they they look great and better than that like they look like they're having so much fun and I would like to feel like that about working out um, I don't feel like that about working out. I, I'll tell you the times that I do feel that way, like, when we're skiing, I just, like, if we live near a ski mountain, I'm pretty sure I would be in better shape. Um, but that's not gonna happen. So, um, the other time I was feeling really good and really in shape, great-grandmother, okay, was when I was doing Bikram yoga, and... I think I need to get back, back to the mat, they say, um, and it's hard because that's a huge time commitment, um, but so is this genealogy and scrapbooking, you know, <laughs> and having children and a job and husband and all those other things, like everything takes time, um, so I just have to figure out how to get that back, get, get some kind of exercise back into my routine, because, yeah. We need to do, I need to do that. I am feeling kind of chubby. <laughs> but I'll tell you, in my head, I'm still, you know, I'm still hot in 16. But then I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh my gosh, who is that old looking lady? Um, I'm not the only one. I've, I've asked friends of mine and they say they feel the same way. And I read something about like being in your 40s and that was a, that was like on the little list of all the things. So, Ellen Louise Joyce, great grandmother. I didn't ever meet her, but um, I guess her husband died um, before she did, as that happens a lot, I think. And um, she would go to visit my grandparents, and I think um, she and my grandfather didn't. You know, they kind of tolerated each other. I don't think he particularly liked her a whole lot. And, um, not sure why. Because he was a pretty agreeable guy. Anyways, um, she would take the bus to go visit them. And then, when she'd had enough, she <laughs> she would, like, put her suitcase out. And that would be the signal that it was the day to take her to the bus station so she could go home. Um, and then when she died, she left, um, $6,000 to my grandparents, and that's where they bought, they bought, um, a sailboat with the money, and called it the Ellen, and so that was, she's the Ellen that the boat was named after. wondering if I can get these little doodads in here and I'm not I don't think they really work um, I do have one in there and I know it, it's um, I don't think it really makes sense Mother Mary Mystery not 100% sure I'm going to write so I'm just going to use some of these tiny little letters And so I'm also wondering, like, on this little mystery here, is, um, is J Mary Jane O'Brien and Mary Shutters the same person? But they can't be because they have different parents. So I really don't know. I don't know. It's very peculiar. It's a mystery. <laughs> not another Mary mystery. Not 100%. Sure. 
percent. What else could I say besides sure? I don't know. I'm just gonna say sure. S U R E. S U R E. Okay. What else can I tell you? My dad would always say that. What else can I tell you? Because he would have a list. <laughs> And he just go, and he would like tick things off as he told me stuff, and then he'd be like, "Oh, I know what I can tell you," but I don't have a list. <laughs> just winging it. Ah, uh, so school is starting. Gosh, next week. No, I'm not thrilled about that. Yes, I would just like to let my children be uneducated and not go to school for a year. I'm just kidding. I don't really mean that. I kind of mean that though. <laughs> I think that, like, um, preteen boys ought to be given, like, a year. Like, they ought to be just sent out into the woods. <laughs> like the olden days. <laughs> just send them out into the woods, and when they've killed, you know, ten wolves, they can come back. And I'm just kidding about that, because I just saw this documentary about this woman who's sa trying to save the wolves. Um, I think that when... The pilgrims came to America, they thought wolves were a big old problem, so they really did send the kids out to um, kill wolves, like the 12-year-old boys. <laughs> and then, um, so I'm wondering if this would benefit from a little washi tape underneath, and I don't know. We're going to have to see how that looks like underneath there, you think that'll work? I'm not sure. Um, it could, though. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think the kids get enough living in the wild, which is probably why it's hard for us to keep all exercised up, too, because, you know, getting back to my weight problems, but, you know, it really is easier if you can um, do something that's active and, like, meaningful, and it's not just like being on a treadmill. Like I love, I love physical activity, but when there's a purpose to it, you know, like skiing or like something like that. Okay, so I put, it's very subtle, but there's a little line under here and under here. And I really wish now that I would have put it under there, but I didn't. And I'm not moving those letters again, am I? No. I kind of think I am. Is there a way I can scooch them under there? Because I think they'd look really good under there. See, this is when being a paper scrapbooker is annoying. Okay. I'm just lifting these up a little bit. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> oh no. Okay. We're just taking them all up again. These letters aren't going to have any stick to them. Can you believe I'm doing this? I can't believe it. This will be the third place these letters have been. <laughs> oh my gosh! As my son says. Oh my glob. That's like from Adventure Time or something like that. I should have done it like this. This would have made more sense. Yeah, it's going to look better, though. Darn it. But it ta it's taking more time, isn't it? It's not very interesting for you. See, this is where I had to just fast forward. <laughs> but I'm not going to. I'll just keep telling you stuff. How's that? Yeah, so I look at the kids' school year starting as a time for me to kind of make an agenda of what I want to accomplish in the fall, and I um, haven't really sat down to do that yet, but I think that getting back to scrapbooking is on my list, and as is exercise and diet. I mean, those are just perpetual things that are like always on my list, you know, if I look at my resolutions from like 20 years ago pretty much is the same as they are now which kind of tells me like I have wanted to change but haven't affected change 
<laughs> That's not very nice. That's not very fun, is it? But it's true. I have the same struggles I have always had. I wonder how many people... I mean, they're not, like, the worst struggles in the world. I, a lot of women kind of struggle with weight and trying to get everything that they want to do done. Time, weight. Those are my issues. Ugh, but I love, i got to tell you, I love this genealogy stuff, especially with the DNA. Um, it just is so fascinating and it's so fascinating because of this right here is that our family records show that um that mary o'brien is my second great grandmother but my research shows it's shutters so who is it i don't know who do you think you are <laughs> who do you think you are um I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be the ultimate in annoyance, but I'm thinking the hashtag should be red. So that in each of my little groupings of um, titles, there's red and gray. So I'm going to hopefully try to put these little, they probably won't stick, put eyes back on the sticker sheet. So one thing I heard on that paper clipping round table that was just on is Wendy Smedley said that Lily B was gone. I didn't know that. I missed that one. I liked their paper. I have a bunch of their 6x6 six six pads. Wait, I probably have one right now. Um, let me see if I can find it so I can, you can see what I'm talking about. I don't know if I have it. I can't find it. I mean, I could if I tried harder, but I'm not gonna. But, um, yeah, that was sad. I was sad to hear that. And I didn't know that. So here we are making our homemade hashtag. And I'm gonna kind of weave it. So it'll go over and under. <laughs> it's harder than it sounds. Oh, goodness. Okay. So here we go. Over and under, and like this. So I think placing it down is easier than trying to do it off the page. All right, you know what I'm gonna say now. I think I'm done. Um, is it embellished? No. Do I care? No. Do I care? I don't know. Maybe a little. Not that much. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like I should. But, um, let me just see if I have something. Where, no, where could I put an embellishment? Where would make sense? Like, there's some space right here. But, do we need anything there? I don't know, not really. Um, hmm. Let me just see. Let me see what I have available. I'm kind of thinking like if I had some kind of a leafy, um, like something like this but leaves, you know, like leaves of the family tree. I don't know if I, oh, maybe, maybe I do. There's leaves in here. They're not that many though. I don't really think that's going to work. But I think that would be interesting. Maybe like a silhouette cut. But I'm feeling too lazy for that at this point. Let's see. Ooh, this could work. Okay. And this is like a vellum kind of a thing. So maybe this will work. Let's just see. This is, hey kid. <laughs> hey kid. By um, Pink Paisley, I guess. Okay. Oh, I didn't really want to pull all of them out, but here we are. Eh. We don't like that, do we? Do we like that? 
I don't think we do. No. We think that's lame, right? This? Uh, I don't know. I know you're getting a shadow on that. That's not best. Put a light in a weird place. So what if I had a little shadow right there? That just seems too goofy. I think I like it with nothing. I'm going to put these, I don't know what I'm going to do with these things now, but they're going to go um, <laughs> with some other border looking things. And I think I'm going to go with that first impulse I had to just call it done. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. I can... I don't know. I think we're good. Calling it done. Here we are. Um, the Mother Mary mystery. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. Hi, scrapbookers. I know I haven't been scrapbooking lately, um, but I've been like super interested in something else that I'm going to try to incorporate into scrapbooking, and I've done that a little bit. But I took the Ancestry DNA test, and um, so <laughs> then I followed along with the Ancestry DNA um, connections. Of course, 24 seconds into this, and I swear my door is going to... Somebody's going to knock on my door, and I haven't had anybody knock on my door all day long. Watch. Two, three, two, one. See if they knock. No? Okay. They have radar. I swear. They're going to come. No? I don't know. Okay. So this is my, this is like a fan chart, okay? And then this is my grandmother, Grace. And, yep, yeah, there we go. 53 seconds. And there's a kid. If I turn on this videotape, there it's like kid radar. <laughs> he hasn't been in here all day long. 